we'll go ahead and get started uh, with the uh, presentation. Thank you for every uh, to everybody for joining the call tonight, and uh, yeah, for for taking the time out of your schedule to to be to be here. Uh, this is the uh, Sanofi Virtual Symposium, and uh, I'm Andy Meyer. I'm the Communications Manager at AMSSM. I'll be your moderator for this evening's call. So I will go ahead and jump right in. Our speaker tonight is Dr. Thomas Trojian, and we are honored to have him give tonight's presentation. Uh, with that, we will turn it over to you, Dr. Trojian. Thanks, Andy. I appreciate that. Welcome, everyone, and thank you for uh, taking time out of your uh, schedule. I'm going to speak about are all interarticular injectables for NeoA the same? This is program is a non-promotional -prom uh, and sponsored by Sanofi. Uh, I'm being compensated and, uh, and or receiving an honorarium from them in uh, connection with this presentation. The content contained in this presentation was developed by Sanofi uh, and so it's not eligible for CME credit. What we're gonna go over is six studies that talk about NeoA and the treatment of injectables for NeoA. Uh, these are different meta-analysis and different studies. Uh, the first one is going to talk about interarticular corticosteroid injections in HA. Then the second one will talk about the different treatments and look at a me network meta-analysis of all those treatments. And then finally, they will do HA and saline. Then we're going to move on to HA and PRP. Then PRP, uh, leukocyte-rich and leukocyte-poor. And then finally, a paper looking at PRP and, and HA together in combination versus HA in and of itself. So the first paper is therapeutic trajectory of uh, hyaluronic acid uh, versus corticosteroid in the treatment of NeoA, a systematic review and meta-analysis. Uh, Ravi uh, Banaru up at uh, Tufts uh, did this paper and uh, uh, Ravi and I did the ORC paper together, 2019. Uh, this was a consensus statement widely recommended, recommend corticosteroids as a useful adjunct. And there's numerous clinical trials report durable benefits of HA on NeoA and others fail to show benefits against placebo. The magnitude of therapeutic effects of HA products analyzed using a network meta-analysis is also inconsistent. So that's kind of why they went through this and did this uh, paper. They wanted to compare interarticular HA versus interarticular corticosteroids for NeoA over time. And so the inclusion criteria were citations comparing the two. They required at least uh, one extractable data point uh, that was a measure of pain. And so you can see they'll do Womack and visual analog scale. All uh, searches were limited to human randomized controlled trials. And the exclusion trial uh, were trials that did not report sufficient information for data extraction and analysis. So they had a total of 1,238 patients were screened. Uh, the Foley report retrieved 130 studies. They got down to nine, and they were able to use seven in their meta-analysis. Out of the seven, there were 606 patients uh, with NeoA, and they compared corticosteroid versus uh, intraarticular HA. And so what they looked at was WOMAC, which is the Western Ontario uh, McMasters. And so this is a osteoarthritis scale that is a validated scale. And they used a visual analog scale or Likert scale. They did an uh, index joint pain when walking, and then an index joint pain during activities other than walking or a spontaneous index uh, joint pain. So there was one pain scale and looking at, a, at something that matters to patient, which is how comfortable or how much pain they're in. As we look at this uh, chart here, we can look at the time point of here, and we can see uh, on my screen, the gray side favors interarticular corticosteroids is that at two weeks, there is a favor towards interarticular corticosteroids. And the I square is the heterogeneity of a study. As you see, we'll see these throughout this whole presentation in the papers, is that there are times when the I square goes up high 
And that means there's a lot of heterogeneity between the studies. And that may be the reason that the, we find a difference is that there's a heterogeneity, or it's not homogeneous, not similar studies that we're comparing. Then at four weeks, the effect seems to be the same between the two products. And as we get out to eight weeks, it starts to favor HA. As we get to 12, it favors HA even more. And when we get to 26, it continues to favor HA over corticosteroids in pain measures. I think this is an important uh, point here, is that when you're looking at, uh, at network meta-analysis or other meta-analysis, that look at the effects of corticosteroids versus the effects of HA, is it important to look at these time points as they do change in the effect and that does change over time uh, for these. So looking at where the study made your cutoff, I think is an important aspect. In our AMSSM paper, for instance, we chose eight weeks because we felt that that was a, a point where patients had been shown in papers that patients were uh, felt like that was an important time point for them. So what did the paper say? The paper said that they saw that we're biased in clinical trials reports, and it may have occurred from post hoc selection. Uh, and so the outcome measures favoring in the, uh, so some of this may be favored because of that selection bias from the studies and that there was heterogeneity uh, in effect. These studies don't have as much heterogeneity as other studies that we will look at, uh, will report in the network meta-analysis. And there was different doses. So you're comparing some HAs, which are low molecular weight, and some HAs, which are higher molecular weight. And the number of injections aren't exactly the same in the studies. And then finally, not all of the clinical trials provided data relating to each time point, which then runs into a difficulty. Uh, some studies where they cut off sooner than later will have different effects. And if they follow them out, we don't know how those patients would have come about. So in this meta-analysis, you have favoring more of a corticosteroid from that two-week mark towards the four-week, but at four to eight, they blend together. And then after eight weeks, it starts to favor more HA for pain reduction over time. So then here, let's look at differentiating factors of intra-articular injectables have a, uh, this study have a meaningful impact on NEOA outcomes and network meta-analysis. Mark Phillips uh, did this. He's uh, out of uh, McMaster's. So evidence has suggested an early onset of clinical benefits from uh, corticosteroids. However, long-lasting effects have been seen with HA. We just showed that in the previous paper, but PRP has been shown to be uh, have evidence of effectiveness and safety in a number of small studies. So can we run a uh, network meta-analysis? And a network meta-analysis looks at, we have one point here, one study, and we compare here. And then the first point compares to a third study here. And you can connect these lines and join them together. So you form a network, an interconnection, and then you can compare the results using transient properties. So they had adults with NEOA, and you have interarticular treatment evaluations of uh, corticosteroid, HA, or PRP. And the primary or secondary outcome in their inclusion criteria was three months plus or minus one month in the same trial interval, as well as having the side effects, the treatment-related adverse events. And then the comparator was a placebo or another eligible intervention. So it had, so the study had to have corticosteroids, HA. PRP and or a placebo. And if they weren't able to extract data uh, by the two independent, then they excluded it. This started off with a, a search that came out to almost 22,000 papers. They were able to drop it down to 1,500 papers with full text screening. And then they read through and checked all these papers to find out which ones might be related. Uh, having done this, it takes a lot of time and effort. And they get down to 64, and they were able to put 47 into the pain, 24 into function, and 38 into treatment-related adverse events. 9,710 adults with NEOA 
and they compared standard release interarticular corticosteroids and extended release uh, interarticular corticosteroids, and then PRP, low molecular weight uh, HA, and high molecular weight HA. In our AMSSM paper, we weren't able to differentiate those two, but we did see a trend, and we'll talk about that in a little bit. Efficacy is the uh, standard mean difference that they used with the 95% uh, differences. A meaningful, important difference would be a negative 0.2 standard mean difference, meaning that uh, in order for this to be a clinically important difference, so when we run statistics, we can find slight changes are statistically important, but they are not meaningfully important to our patients. And in this study, uh, what they uh, found was a 0.2 standard mean difference is a clinically is a meaningful important difference. And as I said before, it was three plus or minus one month. Uh, and uh, we can talk about that if anybody had any questions about that. And then it's the relative risk in the safety, 95% uh, confidence intervals. So the yellow dotted line is our negative 0.2 and that is our uh, meaningful, important difference. And as we look at pain and we look at function, so we, let's look at a pain. There was a 53 pairwise comparison with 47 trials. And the ones that uh, showed a difference really uh, are the ones that don't touch cross over the zero line. And you can see both corticosteroids for pain cross over the zero line which we showed that previously in the uh, HA versus corticosteroid papers, that corticosteroids, once we get out to around three, four uh, months, we are you know, in that two to four month range, you're going to start losing the effectiveness of that. So this does not surprise me. What we see here is high molecular weight HA crossed over that meaningful important difference for pain and so did PRP. And then when we look at function, the high molecular weight cross over that zero point, that negative 0 0.2, and but PRP with a wide confidence interval did not. So then what about treatment related adverse uh, events? There are more treatment related adverse events compared to saline uh, here. And we see that both in our high molecular or low molecular weight, and then in our PRP. Our corticosteroids, neither of them, they both cross one, uh, so not favored uh, having problems or any side effects. Most of these uh, treatment-related adverse events uh, were local soreness for all three of those. Uh, the current uh, network meta-analysis uh, lack precision to be able to rank one of the advantages of network meta-analysis is that sometimes you can run a ranking where you can say, we are 80% certain that this is the best treatment for three uh, plus or minus one month. That of the five here, this would be, you know, sometimes it's 100% obvious that that's the best treatment, sometimes it's 60, blah, blah, blah. Uh, they weren't able to uh, come up with a ranking because of the fact that they really do uh, overlap a, a fair amount uh, here. So it wasn't obvious which one is uh, the highest, but all, again, there's a lot of heterogeneity in these studies between them. And so are some of the differences you're seeing uh, because of the different uh, measures and the different protocols that are being used. And so those are the things that we need to keep an eye on and as we develop our studies, uh, try to stay consistent as we're running these studies. So the conclusions that came out of this paper were published in the paper was that high molecular weight uh, HA uh, was the only one to pass the minimal important difference for both pain and function, that PRP demonstrated possible uh, beneficial results. However, the wide confidence interval and sensitivity analysis made conclusions uncertain. Uh, you were definitely saw a meaningful, important difference, is my personal comment, not out of the paper, for the pain, but not necessarily out of the uh, uh, function. And that extended release IA 
may provide additional clinical benefit over uh, standard release IA. This is coming from the paper. There was a lot of overlap. I think we need more studies to see that. And that the um, treatment related adverse events uh, may be less prevalent in the corticosteroids. That was obvious from the paper, but they were mostly minor and local and resolved. There was uh, very few of them that were uh, a problematic uh, adverse events. So then while we're talking about adverse events, let's move on to the safety paper. So if we uh, look at the safety of these products and we uh, look at this study by Miller, Larry Miller, and this is uh, out of uh, Asheville, North Carolina um, here. And so this is Miller Scientific Consulting uh, here with uh, a number of other people who uh, published on this topic. So they looked at numerous systematic reviews of the uh, effectiveness of HA for NEOA uh, with various conclusions as we've seen. However, there's uh, relatively less attention paid to the safety. One of the things that came up in the, uh, for those of you on this paper, maybe a younger uh, person that the uh, previous orthopedic paper that prompted one of the prompts for our AMSSM HA uh, scientific statement was their fact that they said that HA uh, had a high uh, adverse events. And so when we ran our analysis, they were seemed to be all minor in our paper. And this paper is looking at that as well. So they took it randomized control trials looking at HA and, and saline from systematic NEOA. Uh, sample size need to be 30 patients per group. And uh, the other papers did not limit that. There are a number of papers with 20 um, out there. The uh, Orthopedic Society had set this uh, 30 as a arbitrary number, but that was their number they picked. And I'm saying arbitrary because that's what they set up on the paper that we just did in 2019. Uh, so I think mean 2020. So the identical treatment and follow-up conditions for each group and at least one extractable safety outcome. They uh, were excluded if there was duplicate publications uh, like our paper AMSSM came out in CGSM and BGSM. So there are gonna be duplicate papers out of that uh, type of situations where they get published in both in two journals. So they started with uh, read through 459 papers, uh, got 180 to be able to read the whole paper and then found that they could keep 35 of those studies with 38 comparisons. It came out to 80,078 patients with systematic, with symptomatic NEOA. And then this was comparative of HA and saline. So you look at all cause side, uh, side effects um, here. And so then you have uh, the effects of the serious side effects, you have local side effects, adverse events, and then patient withdrawals. And then you have adverse events related to patient's withdrawals. So if you look at this uh, graph here, all our diamonds are on the one to 10 side, and that would mean a higher risk with uh, HA versus saline. And if you look at the diamond, if it crosses one, then there's no difference. It's, it's considered you know, that they're, they're equal um, and we can't tell. Now it's leaning more towards HA having side effects, having serious adverse uh, events, but the we're not certain because the confidence interval uh, easily crosses over one. And again, in studies, people withdrew from the HA group, uh, but it crosses over one again, so that's not. But what is definitely uh, found is that the local adverse events are definitely more likely with HA. And that would be soreness at the in injection site, uh, some uh, swelling. So patients treated with oral therapies or injections of active products were included in this study. That's a limitation from, their, from the paper set standpoint. Uh, these are their statements. And then in accordance with the best evidence practice and the methodology used by AAOS and their systematic reviews, studies with small sample sizes were excluded. Um, but you don't need to do that in a network meta-analysis or a meta-analysis. 
there is uh, no, uh, you, you can do adjustments to correct for that. And so that they could be included. Uh, they decided not to. Uh, the effects of repeat uh, IAHA cycles on safety could not be evaluated. So we, one of the things that I don't think is really out there as personal comment is that, that you give more than one set of HA. So it's here, 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 the safety there and the effects from one to the next um, is not in this paper and, and we don't have that exactly. So, um, and their comment was HA was shown to be safe for patients with symptomatic with no increase of system, uh, serious uh, adverse events or withdrawal due to the adverse events. And their comment here in the paper was compared with uh, saline, HA is associated with an increased risk of non-serious and transient local reactions. And I, I think that that, if you inject HA, you've seen people have these local uh, side effects that are very treatable and they fade uh, quickly. That's my personal comment, not out of the paper. That platelet-rich plasma versus HA in the treatment of NEOA. This, I think, is an important paper, and it's a start. This is out of uh, TAN in the Department of Critical uh, Care Medicine in China. And this is a beginning uh, paper, but I think the, one of the things that we'll look at here that I want you to pay attention to is the high-square scores on these. So the efficacy and safety of HA injections for the treatment of NEOA uh, remains a matter of conflict. Uh, efficacy using PRP injection has been demonstrated in some studies for NEOA pain. And that the meta-analysis comparing PRP with HA, I think it's an important uh, study. And so previous results were inconsistent across time periods. So, but new uh, uh, randomized control trials have been published. So that's why they uh, went ahead with this paper. This is all from the paper. These are not my, my comments. Uh, to compare the, so their objective was to compare the effectiveness and safety of the PRP and HA in adult uh, patients with NEOA. So inclusion criteria was adults with NEOA and it was randomized control for experimental arm receiving PRP and a control arm receiving HA. So that eliminates a number of studies if they're like more than, or if they're doing PRP versus saline in one study and HA versus saline. This is not a network meta-analysis, this is a direct meta-analysis between the two. And so the studies need to have a comparison in the study between these two products. So the risk of other uh, joint diseases in the NEOA, they uh, tried to remove studies that had like rheumatologic and studies where people had a history of knee surgery, knee fractures. Like how do they do that? You read through the methodology of the study and you um, will see there that they said they didn't include these people. You have to believe them that they didn't. So they got 572 papers, they screened 133, 36 were eligible and they were able to do 26 uh, for meta-analysis. And so 10 of these were excluded and would have been one of these exclusion criteria here. They ended up with 2,430 adult patients with NEOA and they use the WOMAC the visual analog scale, uh, IKDC, the, which is the international knee, Tegner. Uh, Tegner is an odd scale to use for NEOA because it's an activity scale. And if you've seen the Tegner, you know that the top score for Tegner is you can play professional soccer, like professional sports. You know, so most people with NEOA are older, so that they're not going to get up to anywhere near the top scores on the Tegner scale. Lacan scale and Coos, Coos is another knee outcome scale. And then satisfaction rate. I think satisfaction rating is really one of the more important ones, but that's a personal statement. What they found here was they looked at studies and at one month, there wasn't a, uh, in the WOMAC, there wasn't a push over towards PRP. But as we go along, You'll see at three months, there's a, uh, it seems more and more that PRP as a, is uh, more favorable. I point out to you personally to look at the I squared of 88 uh, here. And then the six months PRP and then 12 months PRP. 
So PRP in this study, doing that network, doing this, sorry, this meta-analysis really does point to favor towards uh, PRP over HA uh, for uh, the WOMAC scores, the total WOMAC. And these are minus 10 uh, toward favoring the uh, for WOMAC for PRP. So the safety of PRP versus HA, uh, there was no significant difference in their study from 20 trials, 1908 patients, and that they had no significant difference between uh, PRP and HA but you had 11.2% and 8.9% confidence uh, interval uh, crosses one. So you can't, you know, it, it's not fair to say that they're different not numbers. Uh, they may be just by chance. So most adverse events were mild pain and swelling uh, here. And you have uh, cases of stiffness and heaviness and two cases of what's called a pseudoseptic reaction. It's not sepsis, but you have an elevation in uh, white count uh, in your uh, fluid and increased fluid. Uh, some, uh, they didn't report here whether they were eosinophils. Some people get some uh, reactions to uh, HA products uh, because people are, can be allergic to products. Uh, so limitation, small sample size and short-term follow-up of each study. So we don't know if people had adverse events would have been more over time uh, significant heterogeneity. We talked about that with the I squares. One of the problems with the heterogeneity is that you know you may be co co uh, comparing uh, two different types of apples. I'm not going to say apples and oranges, but you might be uh, two different types of apples. They're still apples, they're still very similar, but you know you've got a baking apple and, a, and an eating apple. They're still not exactly the same. So no sufficient uh, data to analyze uh, several scales. Um, so, you know, it's hard to uh, analyze like a coos, et cetera, but they were able to get Womax, usually the one that most studies will use. And so because of the heterogeneity, they had to use the random effects model in which the reliability of the findings uh, would still be affected due to a variety of factors. Meaning this is not the end all to be all, that more studies are needed comparing P PRP and HA. So for the young researchers out there, more studies are needed comparing NEOA for PRP and, and HA um, so that we can show what is the effectiveness that uh, because of her, there's a lot of heterogeneity in these studies. Patient uh, specific outcomes would be helpful, like the ORC or Marac Rater scale would be good. Those are all personal comments, not on the paper. Uh, for the non-surgical treatment of NEOA, PRP was more effective than HA was their conclusion. Uh, indicating significant potential for PRP to reduce patients' early pain and function. There's no significant difference in the adverse uh, events between the two groups, but the analysis showed a trend towards favorable AE profile for HA. That was from their conclusions in the paper. I think the important aspect is that PRP in this study uh, does show uh, that it, as time goes on, you get a longer uh, effect, you know, uh, and, compared to HA, so a, a bigger effect over time. But that being said, a lot of heterogeneity, and that may change in five years, 10 years with more studies. Adverse reactions and clinical outcomes between leukocyte poor versus leukocyte rich. This is another one. So if you've got HA, and you have low molecular weight and high molecular weight, which one should you use? That's always been a big question. And then the leukocyte poor versus leukocyte rich really is a big question. And so this is one of the reasons why we pulled this paper to talk about this. PRP has gained attention as a therapeutic outcome for NEOA, and however, its efficacy varies widely. Uh, presence of leukocytes in PRP raises a concern due to known pro-inflammatory act activity. And some in vitro studies show, in vitro, show that leukocyte-rich PRP can provide beneficial out effects of EOA versus interaction between platelets and neutrophils. So should you use leukocyte rich or leukocyte poor? That is the question here. And they compared different leukocyte concentrations here. The AOS came out with a study and 
as well, uh, looking, you know, when we put it out there. And, and uh, the data was, is not very strong uh, and more studies are needed. And this is a more, this includes some studies that we did have. So cohort of patients diagnosed with NEOA interventions uh, consisting of intraarticular injection of PRP and a comparison of leukocyte poor or leukocyte rich and all, evidence, uh, all levels of evidence. Uh, they did outcomes including P, uh, PROMS patient response and, the, and adverse events. So studies not clearly reporting parameters in the exclusion criteria, studies not clearly reporting the follow-up time frame, animal studies, uh, and then technical notes, letters to editors. They did do uh, review articles, meta analysis. They did do cohort studies, which is, uh, is uh, something to note here, not just randomized control trials in this study. And so they had 212 papers, total screened uh, 114 papers, and the uh, eligibility of 59, and then included in the meta-analysis were 32 papers. Of that, there were 1,070 patients with NEOA evaluated with leukocyte poor plate with rich plasma, whereas uh, there was 539 for leukocyte rich uh, here. So as a comparator, the green is the leukocyte poor and the orange is leukocyte rich. They use these different uh, knee uh, scales. I'm favorable, I personally am favorable to Omarac uh, Orzi because I think it's a patient oriented scale. And then uh, looking at local adverse events such as pain and swelling. And what they found was when you looked at pain improvement between the leukocyte poor green, leukocyte rich orange, and they did the compare, uh, combine both. What you're, you don't see here is really a uh, difference in the uh, them. They overlap at three and six months. And then they start to separate really at 12 months here. And you can see that uh, a number of studies in your, you look at the N equals, that the uh, at 12 months there, there's a uh, the N of 250 in the leukocyte poor and an N of 202 in the leukocyte rich uh, here. So you know these are different uh, looking at different studies here. And again, I will point you to the I squares in these studies. Uh, they are uh, very large. When we look at uh, mean adverse reaction rates you do see that leukocyte rich has higher uh, rates here for adverse reactions and for swelling. Um, and the dotted center line is the mean of the two groups. So this included not only randomized control trials, this is what they said their limitations were, but also prospective comparative studies and case series. And so because of that, you're gonna get heterogeneity uh, because it's uncontrolled bias. And that only one study compared leukocyte poor uh, PRP versus leukocyte rich. Therefore, again, this is another spot where if you're a young researcher, this would be a great opportunity for you. Um, and then heterogeneity in the evaluation. I really pushed, you know, to look at a use the Womac and the Orzi or Marac here. Um, you know, they use the platelet activation, white blood cells classification was applied to define leukocyte poor and leukocyte rich uh, here in the paper. Uh, it's really kind of difficult for me to go through those two here um, because, you know, we don't have the time to go through each paper on this, you know, each sub paper of this one. Heterogeneity and injection, injections, frequency, and blood draw times. Not every study used ultrasound for injections here. So the efficacy of leukocyte poor platelet rich plasma versus leukocyte rich platelet rich plasma in terms of improvement of pain of up to 12 months uh, is comparable. And that the local uh, adverse reactions uh, were increased for leukocyte rich compared to leukocyte poor. Um, and uh, those again were short term as well. And then uh, now we're down to our, now we're into our uh, paper here looking at platelet-rich plasma combined with HA uh, 
And their statement is it improves pain and function compared with HA alone in EOA. And it's a systematic review and meta-analysis. Uh, this uh, paper uh, was done out of Greece and uh, Kurosavidis uh, here was one of his, was the primary author. Brian Cole is out of the US, out of Chicago. Uh, so uh, background, HA has been shown to reduce uh, OA symptoms by limiting the inflammatory pathway. And then their statement also is PRP is currently not recommended by guidelines, but may uh, reduce pain and inflammation associated with NEOA and tissue regulations due to the high levels of growth factors present in platelets. And a, num a limited number of clinical studies have evaluated the synergistic effects between the two. And most of these uh, um, studies looking at the synergistic effects in patients, uh, you know, has been very small. This is a, my own comment, uh, but in animal models, so this is where it came out of that there may be a benefit from combining the two and using two different pathways. Now back to the paper. To evaluate the efficacy of injection of PRP combined with HA versus HA alone in the management of NEOA, that was their goal here. They used randomized controlled trials or observation analysis comparing PRP with HA versus HA along with NEOA. Uh, so you, you can tell that there may be some heterogeneity here when you start doing that type of stu uh, studies. Uh, studies with clinic, uh, quantitative clinical outcomes were included and studies published in English. And then the exclusion criteria were studies including NEOA patients treated with injectables other than PRP and HA or HA. And then case series and case reports, and then non-human studies uh, or live humans, and then uh, secondary review papers, and then papers. There are a few papers written in Chinese uh, that they excluded. So they screened 386 papers. They were able to uh, work down to 52 that they seemed eligible, and this this is now down to four. So you have four that qualified for the study. Brown is. PRP and HA, and red is HA here. Uh, there's 377 total patients, 193 in the combination, and 184 in the HA alone. And change in pain intensity as assessed at six months by visual analog scale. And then secondary were three and 12. So this is their uh, three, six, and 12 month data. And none of them cross over. And you can see at the 12 month data, um, the heterogeneity was really low. Um, and at the three and six month, the heterogeneity here is uh, in that range, you start getting uh, concerned or worried about. Um, pain wise, uh, when you looked at just pain itself on the Womax scale, uh, there wasn't a difference between the two products. When you looked at function, you started to get more function and less stiffness with the uh, addition of PRP to your uh, HA. Uh, one of the trials included was not in a randomized control trial. That'll be a, definitely a limitation to your net, your network, your meta analysis because of the uh, increase, the risk of selection bias. And then unable to assess publication bias for the outcome due to the, uh, them only being uh, four studies. So you don't know when you try to do a funnel plot, you can't tell whether or not. Uh, you know, there's a publication bias, you need more papers. And then due to lack of patient level data uh, and uh, adverse events, they weren't able to do an, uh, a number of things. Uh, so patient outcomes uh, like the ORZ or Morac would be nice to have. That's, uh, again, not, that's me, not the paper. Conclusion, systematic, uh, symptomatic uh, patients with NEOA injected with a combination of PRP and HA did better then on, on the visual analog scale, function and stiffness at 12 months, compared those with HA alone. And this study provides encouraging evidence for the use of PRP and HA combination therapy uh, to manage uh, NEOA. Um, I think this is uh, one of those ones where uh, there needs to be more data on this. Um, you know, we go back to some, uh, some of our studies, and I'm going to go back for a uh, stop, uh, Andy. You know, when we go back to uh, 
papers like this one, where we're looking at 12 that look like uh, PRP may be, give us better Womack score alone compared to HA. Um, but we also have studies, you know, where we're looking at the network meta-analysis with uh, more effects that we can look at our pain scores and our Womack, and we can see there's an, a large overlap uh, when we're able to differentiate the type of uh, HA uh, molecular, high molecular weight versus low molecular weight. And so uh, I think that, that that is an important aspect of it as well, that our, uh, our pain scores really uh, do, uh, you know, do make a difference. And so I think one of the things that we uh, want to look at or need to kind of address is, uh, is that more studies looking at that PRPHA combination is that uh, better than like that paper didn't look at PRPHA versus, versus just PRP. I think is the is another paper that needs to be done um, out there. And so, do you add HA to PRP? Does it improve PRP in and of itself? And should you just you know should you use a high molecular weight versus a low molecular weight? Thanks. Yeah, brilliant. Uh, thank you again. We covered a, a ton of ground on that, and uh, really, uh, you know, something that's that's going to help um, a lot of our members and uh, and everybody else. So, uh, and just wanted to also uh, give a shout out and and say uh, thank you to Sanofi uh, 